Hello, dear friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mukesh English. This is Mukesh Soni. In this video, I have brought to you a famous story titled The Last Song, written by Tamsula Ao, the Northeast writer. Dr. Tamsula Ao, a famous recipient of Sahitya Academy Award in 2013 for her collection of short stories titled Lebanon for My Head. She is undoubtedly one of the country's finest writers. She's a retired professor of English from the Northeastern Hill University, Shillong. She has five books of poetry to her credit. Tamsula traces a detailed, deep, and intense narration of Northeast India through the art of storytelling. She has delineated the agonies and aspirations of a people, the Nagas, with a deep understanding and compassion in her fictional work. Her works depicts her works depict the troublesome life of the Nagas torn in between terror and violence fraught between the various groups for power. Now, in the story, the last song, Tamsula Ao speaks about the government forces determined to teach all those villagers the consequences of supporting the rebel cause. Even the house of God could not save them from the atrocities of the army. The last song, which is the story of a young girl called Epenio, who seems to have a great talent for singing and who will be singing a sweet, melodious Syrian solo song in the village church at a big event of dedication of the new church building. In the opening line, in the opening line of the story, Tamsula wrote, Tamsula writes, it seemed the little girl was born to sing what the mother considered unreasonable behavior in a child barely a year old was actually the first dedication, first indication of the singing genius that she had given birth to. So she is a singer by earth, by birth. The girl's mother, Libeni, she has a religious bent of mind. She believed in God and used to worship God. She never left Epenio alone at home. Temsula says, her mother would take Epenio to church even on Sundays because she could not be left alone at home. Epenio's father, Zemben, was a gifted singer. Her mother, Libeni, was a widow because, because her father died in teacher's training course. Libeni and Epenio survived on what was grown in the field. Libeni was the best weaver and her shawls were in great demand. The daughter had deep desire to help a mother. The mother was convinced that she has inherited this virtue from her father. Which virtue? Singer, as a talent of singing. Libeni did not marry second time for her daughter. Apanio was perfect blend of natural, physical and singing beauty. Means to say she was not only the most beautiful girl in the village, but also the famous singer in the village. Tamsula stressed, she says, every time the choir sang, it was her voice that made even the commonest song sound heavenly. She was so famous. Along with her singing voice, her beauty also blossomed as Apenia approached her 18th birthday, which earned her nickname, Singing Beauty. So she was also called as a singing beauty. Now, at the village school, Epenio did well and became the star pupil. When she was old enough to help a mother in spreading the thread on the loom, she would sit nearby and watch her weave the colorful shawls, which would be sold to bring in additional income. Libeni had the reputation of being one of the best weavers in the village and her shawls were in great demand. Now, by and by, Apenio too learned the art from her mother and became an excellent weaver like her. In the meantime, her love for singing too was growing. People soon realized that not only did she love to sing, but also that Apenio had an exquisite singing voice. She was inducted into the church choir, where she soon became the lead soprano. Every time the choir sang, it was her voice that made even the commonest song sound heavenly. Along with her singing voice, her beauty also blossomed. 
as Apne approached her 18th birthday and she was called as the singing beauty in the village. So Lebanese joy knew no bounds. She was so happy as a mother that all those years of loneliness and hardships were well rewarded by God through her beautiful and talented daughter. So Apneo was not only an excellent viewer but also the most important, most significant singer in the, in the village as well as in the church. One particular year, the villagers were in, an, were in an exceptionally, specially expectant mood because there was a big event coming up in the village church in about six months, the dedication of the new church building. A new church is about to, about to be ready and they are about to enter. So this ceremony is called as the dedication of the new church building. Every member of the church had contributed towards the building fund by donating in cash and kind. And it had taken them nearly three, three years to complete the new structure of tin roof and wooden frames to replace the old one of bamboo and thatch. So the new church took about three years to get it built. In every household, the women folk were planning new clothes for the family, brand new shawls for the men and the new skirts, which are also called the lungis for the women because they were waiting for the dedication of the new church building. At the same time, Christmas was approaching, so it was a chance of double Christmas celebration. The whole village was being uh, spruced up for the occasion as some eminent pastors. The pastors means to say the ministers who are the in charge of the Christian church. So some eminent pastors from, from the neighboring villages were being invited for the dedication service. Picks earmarked for the feast were given special food to fatten them up. The service was planned for the first week of December, which would ensure that harvesting of the fields would be over and the special celebration would not interfere with the normal Christmas celebrations of the church. The villagers begin to prepare begin the preparations with great enthusiasm, often making often joking among themselves that oh this year they would have a double Christmas. Now the independent the independence moment was also gaining moment was also getting its rise in between by the day and even the remotest villages were getting involved if not directly in terms of the members joining the underground army then certainly by paying taxes to the under underground government so the villages were silently paying some sort of support financial support in the form of taxes to this underground army this underground government this particular village was also not different they had been compelled to pay the dues every year, the amount calculated on the number of households in the village. Curiously, curious, curiously enough, the collections would be just before the Christmas holidays. Christmas holidays, perhaps because travel for the collections was easier through the winter forest or perhaps because they too wanted to celebrate Christmas. In any case, the villages were prepared for the annual visit from the brethren of the forest and the transaction was carried out without a hitch. That means to say the villagers had to pay, they had to donate some money, some sort of taxes to the under underground government because some sort of independence movement was going on. Now, the government forces, the government forces, they came to know that this particular village is supporting some underground army, some underground government. So the government forces were determined to teach all those villages the consequences or consequences of supporting the rebel cause by paying the taxes. Now, unknown to the villages, they didn't know that this is about to happen. They are going to be punished. Unknown to the villages, a sinister plan was being hatched by the forces to demonstrate to the entire Naga people what happens when you betray your own government. So they planned it that how do you betray your own, your own government and you support those underground army. Now let's see what we, we will do for you guys. So such kind of plan was going on, such kind of shadintra was going on. 
it was decided that the army would go to this particular village on the day when they were dedicating the new church building and arrest all the leaders of the crime of paying the taxes to the underground forces so which did they have decided that they will attack or they will they will punish or they will um, arrest all the leaders when when the day when they are going to do this dedication ceremony now the time has the time has approached the dedication ceremony and before that some preparations going on the dedication sunday dawned bright and cool it was december after all and every villager attired in his own her best assemble in front of the new church which was on the same site as the old one so nearby the old church the new church is being built the villagers were undecided about what to do with the old one still standing near the new one they had postponed ending any decision until after the dedication that morning the choir was standing together in front of the in front porch front porch of the new church to lead the congregation in the singing before the former formal inauguration after which they would enter the new building means to say after this prayer service over and then the whole crowd they will move they will enter to the building to the new church apenio the lead singer in the choir was standing in the middle of the front row looking resplendent in her new lungian shawl she was going to perform solo on the occasion after the group song of the choir means to say after the group song there is another program is here that here apenio will sing a will have a solo singing performance as the pastor as i told you pastor means to say the minister in charge of the church as the pastor led the congregation in the invocatory prayer prayer invocatory prayer means to say which we call as the invocation song the first prayer a hush fell on the crowd as though in great expectation the choir you the choir would sing the first number after the prayer as a song the crowd was waiting to hear begin there was a sound of gunfire in the distance the moment she started to sing a gunfire could be heard and it was ominous sound which meant that army would certainly disrupt the festivities but the choir sang on unfazed though uneasy shuffles could be heard from the among the crowd the pastor too began to look worried he turned to a deacon and seemed to consulting with him about something just as the singing subsided the moment the singing stopped another sound reverberated throughout the length and the breadth breadth of the village and one person whose name is deboshi a frightened deboshi with fear and trembling in his voice was telling the people to stay wherever they are they were do, and no need to attempt to run away or fight you stay there don't run away he, he told there was a stunned silence and the congregation froze in the place places unable to believe that the dedication sunday was going to be consecrated by the arrogant indian army now army's brutality very soon the approaching soldiers surrounded the crowd and the pastor was commanded to come forward and identify himself along with the gamburas gamburas means the village headman they pushed and showed the pastor and the gamburas prodding them with the butts of the guns towards the waiting jeeps below the steps of the church some of the villagers tried to argue with the soldiers and they too have kicked they too were kicked and assaulted some members of the choir left the singing and were seen trying to run away to safety only apenio stood her ground she sang on oblivious of the situation as if an unseen presence was guiding her her mother standing with the congregation saw her daughter singing her heart out as if to withstand withstand the might of the guns with a voice raised to god in heaven she called out to her to stop but apenio did not seem to hear or see anything in desperation libeni rushed forward to pull her daughter away but the leader of the army the soldier was very quicker he grabbed apenio by the hair and grabbed her away dragged her away from the crowd towards the old church building all this while the girl was heard singing the chorus of her song over and over again 
she continued singing while being dragged there was chaos everywhere villagers trying to flee the scene were either shot or kicked or clubbed by the soldiers who seemed to be everywhere more people were seen running away desperately some seeking security in the old church and some even entered the new one hoping that at least the house of the god would offer them safety from the soldiers but it was very unfortunate that apenio and her mother were also raped and killed by the indian military forces which the story is later told by a woman to the new generation but the savagery was not over yet seeing that it would be a waste of time and the bullets to kill off all the witnesses inside the church the order was given to set the church on fire the new church too standing not so far from the old one caught the blaze and was badly damaged even the granaries in the villages also go up in the flames the villagers gathered all the bones of the six choir members and put in a common coffin but those of the mother and the daughter apenio and libeni they put in a separate one after somber and songless funeral service the question arose about where to bury them where to bury apenio and libeni though the whole village had embraced christianity long ago some of the old superstitions and traditions had not been totally abandoned the deaths of these unfortunate people were considered to be from unnatural causes and according to tradition they could not be buried in the village graveyard christianity or no christianity some younger ones protested they said how can you say that they were members of a church and sang in the choir the old one countered this by saying so what we are still nagas aren't we and for us some things never change the debate went on for some time until a sort of compromise was reached finally the conclusion is here they would be buried just outside the boundary of the graveyard to show that their fellow their, their fellow villagers had not abandoned the remains to a remote forest site but there was a stipulation what no headstones would be erected for them so now let's conclude the story tamsula eo through her voice through her wu telling stories captures the voice of common naga people who are somewhere unaware of this moment but were made victims and loss of life at last we find that both the mother and daughter apenio and libeni lost their honor as well as their life the captain was also punished and god justified his ways the story also reflects the theme of ethnicity violence and the concept of unconsciousness thank you so much for listening dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukesh english at the rate of gmail.com please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again